All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Meenakshi Sant and with me is Saira Mushtaba. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts in Man Ki Baat program at 11 this morning. Health Minister Dr. Harshvardhan says Corona vaccine likely to be available in the country by January. Last day for filing of income tax and GST returns extended till 31st of December. The Shera is being celebrated across the country today. And in IPL cricket, Kings 11 Punjab beat Sunrisers Hyderabad by 12 runs in Dubai. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain do ghas ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. Now, the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people in the country and abroad in the Man Ki Baat program on All India Radio at 11 a.m. today. It will be the 70th episode of the monthly radio program. It will be broadcast on the entire network of AIR and Doordarshan and also on AIR News website www.newsonair.com and News on AIR mobile app. It will also be streamed live on the YouTube channels of AIR, DD News, PMO and Information and Broadcasting Ministry. AIR will broadcast the program in regional languages immediately after the Hindi broadcast. The regional language versions will be repeated at 8 in the evening. Health Minister Dr. Harshvardhan has expressed hope that COVID-19 vaccine will be made available in the country by January next year. Speaking at a program on DD News, Dr. Vardhan said there are three vaccine candidates in India out of which one is at the advanced stage of clinical trial of phase 3. Of the other two vaccine candidates which are in clinical trial of phase 2, one has recently entered the third phase of trial bharat mein 30 vaccine candidates hain sare duniya mein 9 vaccine candidates advanced to trials mein hain jisme se teen bharat ke advanced stages mein hain ek to clinical phase 3 ke advanced mein hain aur do jo hai phase 2 ke advanced mein the ab usme se bhi ek phase 3 mein chala gaya teeno ke madhyam se hame ummeed hai ki january ke andar to definitely hamare ko vaccine uplabdh ho jayegi aur humne sari jo taiyariyan jis prakar se ki hain if all goes well to june july se pehle hame 400 se 500 million doses uplabdh ho jayegi Dr. Harshvardhan also appealed to the people to follow COVID-appropriate behavior to check the spread of virus in view of the coming festive seasons. The Health Ministry has said that in a significant achievement, India's total recoveries from COVID-19 have crossed the landmark milestone of 70 lakh. In a tweet, the ministry said the top four states account for more than half of the total recovered cases. It said about 44% active caseload of the country is contributed by them. The ministry said 10 states and union territories are contributing 81% of the high number of daily recoveries. The country's COVID-19 recovery rate has now reached 89.78%. The actual caseload currently comprises only 8.71% of the total positive cases. Presently, the total number of active cases in the country is over 6,80,000. In the last 24 hours, 53,370 new cases were reported, taking the total number of positive cases in the country to over 78 lakh. In the same period, 650 deaths were reported, taking the total to 1,17,956. Currently, India's case fatality rate is 1.51%, which is one of the lowest globally. A total of 4,116 new confirmed cases of coronavirus infection were reported in Delhi in the last 24 hours, taking the total number of cases to over 3,52,000. The Delhi government said that over 3,19,000 people affected with coronavirus have been cured so far. In the last 24 hours, 
3,614 people recovered and 36 deaths were reported in the national capital, taking the toll to 6,225. Presently, the total number of active cases in the national capital is 26,467. In Bihar, COVID-19 recovery rate has improved to 94.36%. This is 4.58% more than the national average. Active patients in the state are continuously decreasing. At present, 10,879 patients are undergoing treatment in various hospitals. 1,99,521 patients have so far recovered from the infection in the state. An average of over 1 lakh corona testing is being conducted every day. Gujarat recorded 1,021 new cases during the past 24 hours. The recovery rate has reached up to 89.37%. More from our correspondent. Gujarat has recorded six deaths yesterday, the lowest during the last six months on a third successive day. Total death toll of COVID-19 in the state has gone up to 3,682. Meanwhile, the total cases detected so far in Gujarat has reached up to 1,66,254. 1,48,585 patients recovered from COVID-19 till now. 1,013 patients recovered during the last 24 hours. More than 56,91,000 tests have been carried out in the state till date. Maximum 237 new cases reported from Surat, while Ahmedabad recorded 177 new cases. At present, total active cases in the state are 13,987, out of which 71 patients are on ventilator. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. After a long break and continuous demand by the gym owners to allow them to open, the gymnasiums in Maharashtra are finally back in the business from today. The gym owners were continuously insisting to allow them to open the gyms, but Maharashtra government was not ready to start the gym activities, considering the risk of spreading the COVID infection due to the highest positivity rate in the state. But after the improvement in recovery rate and decline in the cases, the state government has allowed the gyms to open from today. A report. As the gymnasiums in Maharashtra are back on track from today, the gym owners as well as the gym users will have to follow the guidelines and adopt a new culture to keep their activities on and also to remain healthy and safe from the COVID infection. It is mandatory to wear a mask all the time in the gym and they will have to follow the respiratory etiquette strictly while coughing and sneezing. Group exercises and facilities like steam, sauna and shower are not allowed. Distance between the gym equipment should be at least 6 feet. Separate entry and exit routes should be available. There should be regular sanitization of gym equipment and also the entry and exit points. Gym owners are also told to follow staggering of gym timings and limit the number of people per batch to maintain safe distance. Installation and use of Arogya Setu app is advised to all. Shailesh Patil, AIR News, Mumbai. Karnataka has achieved a new record in testing with 1,12,545 COVID tests conducted yesterday, taking the total tally to 72,81,090. The state also reported more recoveries than the new COVID cases for the 10th consecutive day. More from our correspondent. Karnataka Health and Family Welfare and Medical Education Minister Dr. K. Sudhagar in a tweet said that out of 1,12,545 tests conducted yesterday, 90,564 are RT-PCR tests. 15 districts reported zero deaths and two districts reported more than five deaths. The recovery rate is 87%. Out of 30 districts in the state, 22 districts have registered below 100 new cases yesterday. Among the new cases, Bengaluru City reported the highest number of 2,251 cases and the lowest number of seven cases reported from Beaver District. The war room in charge, Munoz Modgil, has said that consistency in maintaining highest possible testing numbers and cooperation from people by wearing masks and ensuring social distancing have resulted in state gaining ground in reducing positivity and the fatality rate. R. Murthy, AR News, Bengaluru. The numbers of COVID-19 in Tamil Nadu keep crashing day by day. In the past 24 hours, only 2,886 new cases have come up, which is a new low. The active case load also has dropped below 32,000. A report. The downward move of COVID-19 graph is being witnessed in almost all the districts in Tamil Nadu, including in Chennai. 20 out of 37 districts in the state have reported no deaths due to the viral disease in the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, the state government has announced that from January 1st onwards, all the state government offices will go back to the routine of functioning for five days a week. In a notification issued on May 15th, the attendance of the staff has been reduced to 50% on any single day. 
Sunday as they were asked to come in turns for six days a week. After a slew of relaxations, the number of working days and working hours are now going to get reversed to the pre-lockdown times. Jay Singh, AR News, Chennai. Talking to All India Radio, medical expert Dr. Manus Kamal Sen has asked people to follow corona-related guidelines to stay safe, especially during the upcoming winter season. घर से पहले निकलने से पहले ये हमें ये ध्यान में रखना कि कोविड गया नहीं है जितने भी हमारी दिशा निर्देश हैं इस विषय में जैसे सामाजिक दूरी बरकरार रखना हाथ का धोना और मास्क का सही इस्तेमाल करना इसको हमें सदैव मन में रखते हुए तब आगे बढ़ना है जहां तक हो सके भीड़ से हमें दूरी बनाए रखना है घर में ही त्योहार मनाए इलेक्ट्रॉनिक माध्यम से सारे त्योहार मनाए जा रहे हैं तो हम भी इसका सही तरीके से पालन करें Prime Minister Narendra Modi virtually launched three key projects in Gujarat yesterday. Mr Modi launched the Kisan Suryodaya Yojana for the farmers of Gir Somnath, Patan and Dahod districts which will provide daytime power supply to farmers for irrigation. Speaking on the occasion the prime minister said the Kisan Suryodaya Yojana starting from Junagarh Gir Somnath will bring a new dawn in the lives of the farmers. He said in the coming days this scheme will be implemented in more than 1000 villages and will make the everyday life of millions of farmers easier. Kisan Suryodaya Yojana na sirf rajya ke kisanon ko suraksha degi balki unke jeevan mein naya savera bhi layegi. Kisanon ko raat ke bajaye jab subah suryodaya se lekar ke raat 9 baje ke dauran three phase bijli milegi. तो यह नया सवेरा ही तो है मैं गुजरात सरकार को इस बात के लिए भी बधाई दूंगा कि बाकी व्यवस्थाओं को प्रभावित किए बिना ट्रांसमिशन की बिल्कुल नई कैपेसिटी तैयार करके ये काम किया जा रहा है इस योजना के तहत अगले दो तीन वर्षों में लगभग साढ़े तीन हजार सर्किट किलोमीटर नई ट्रांसमिशन लाइनों को बिछाने का काम किया जाएगा Prime Minister also inaugurated India's biggest cardiac hospital, UN Mehta Institute of Cardiology and Research Center at Civil Hospital Campus in Ahmedabad. Mr Modi said efforts are being made to connect every village with better health facilities. Mr Modi said under Ayushman Bharat, 21 lakh people from Gujarat have received treatment so far. आज भारत के सबसे बड़े कार्डियक अस्पताल के रूप में यूएन मेहता इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कार्डियोलॉजी एंड रिसर्च सेंटर का लोकार्पण किया गया है ये देश के उन चुनिंदा अस्पतालों में से हैं जिसमें वर्ल्ड क्लास इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर भी है और उतनी ही आधुनिक हेल्थ फैसिलिटी भी है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑल्सो लॉन्च द गिरनार हिल रोप वे प्रोजेक्ट इन जूनागढ़ द टेम्पल रोप वे एट गिरनार इज अ हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी क्रो रूपी प्रोजेक्ट It consists of a total of 25 cabins and is of 2.3 kilometers in length and 900 meters height. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts in Mann Ki Baat program at 11 this morning. Health Minister Dr. Harshvardhan says corona vaccine likely to be available in the country by January. Last date for filing of income tax and GST returns extended till 31st of December. The share is being celebrated across the country today and in IPL cricket Kings 11 Punjab beat Sunrisers Hyderabad by 12 runs in Dubai. For quick news updates from the clock follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. With a view to provide more time to taxpayers for furnishing of income tax returns, the central government has extended the deadline for filing returns by individual taxpayers for financial year 2019-20 till 31st of December this year. Earlier, the tax filing deadline was 30th of November. The due date of furnishing income tax returns for taxpayers whose accounts require to be audited has also been extended till 31st of January 2021. The due date for furnishing of income tax returns for the taxpayers who are required to furnish report in respect of international and specified domestic transactions has been extended to 31st January 2021. 
government has also extended the due date for filing GST annual return in form GSTR 9 and GSTR 9A and reconciliation statement in form GSTR 9C for financial year 2018-19 from 31st October to 31st December 2020. Filing of annual return form GSTR 9 and GSTR 9A for 2018-19 is optional for taxpayers who had aggregate turnover below 2 crore rupees. The filing of reconciliation statement in Form 9C for 2018-19 is also optional for the taxpayers having aggregate turnover up to 5 crore rupees. Government had received a number of representations regarding need to extend due date for filing annual return and reconciliation statement for 2018-19 on the ground that due to COVID-19 pandemic, related lockdown and restrictions, normal operation of businesses has still not been possible in several parts of the country. Central Government has approved a scheme for grant of ex gratia payment of difference between compound interest and simple interest for six months to borrowers in specified loan accounts to mitigate COVID-19 effect. According to Department of Financial Services, the scheme can be availed by borrowers in specified loan accounts for a period from 1st March to 31st August. It said that borrowers who have loan accounts having sanction limits and outstanding amount of not exceeding 2 crore rupees will be eligible for the scheme. Under the scheme, MSME loans, education loan, housing loan, credit card deals, automobile loans, consumption loans and personal loans to professionals are covered. However, borrowers whose aggregate of all facilities with lending institutions is more than 2 crore rupees will not be eligible for ex gratia payment under the scheme. In Bihar, campaigning for the first phase of assembly elections has reached its peak as only two days are left for it to end. 71 constituencies spread over 16 districts will go to polls in this phase on the 28th of this month. Leaders of various political parties are leaving no stone unturned to woo the voters. They are holding a series of election meetings and road shows. More from our correspondent. Leaders of both NDA and Grant Alliance are making blistering attack on each other. Addressing election meetings at Lucky Sarai and Bihar Sharif, BJP President J.P. Nadda said, RGD leaders are not expressing regret for their 15 years misrule. While addressing rallies at Khagaria, JDU President and Chief Minister Nitesh Kumar said, Tejasvi Yadav should ask his father about governance during his tenure. On the other hand, criticizing NDA government senior RGD leader Tejasvi Yadav said, People of the state has given 15 years to Nitesh Kumar but he neither provided government jobs to youth nor his government set up any industry in the state for job opportunity. Senior BJP leader and union minister Smriti Rani said if NDA government is voted to power, 5 lakh jobs will be provided to youth in IT and software areas and IT hub will be set up in Patna and Rajgir. LJP President Chirag Paswan, RLSP leader Upend Kushwaha and leaders of left parties are holding rallies and road shows in support of their party candidates. With KK from Patna, this is Ritu Srivastav, AIR News. In Bihar, three people, including a candidate from Shivhar Assembly constituency, were shot dead while campaigning yesterday evening. The police said the incident took place around 7 p.m. in Hatsar village, under Purnahiya police station area of Shivhar district. Ten unidentified assailants attacked the Janta Dal Rashtravadi candidate, Sri Narayan Singh, while campaigning for the assembly polls. During the incident, one of the criminals was nabbed by the crowd but was killed in the subsequent mob lynching. The police said prima facie it appears to be an incident of gang war because Sri Narayan Singh had criminal antecedents. Pantry procurement for Kharif 2020-21 is going on at a good pace in the procuring states of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Uttarakhand, Chandigarh, Jammu and Kashmir, Gujarat and Kerala. The Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution in a statement said that so far 135.72 lakh metric tons of paddy have been procured against last year's corresponding purchase of 109.54 lakh metric tons. This shows an increase of 23.91% over last year. The Ministry said based on the proposal from the states, approval was accorded for procurement of 
45.1 lakh metric tons of pulses and oil seeds of Kharif marketing season 2020 for the states of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Telangana, Gujarat, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Odisha, Rajasthan and Andhra Pradesh under the price support scheme. On the second day of his visit to Darjeeling district in West Bengal and Sikkim today, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh is scheduled to interact with Jawans at border posts in Sikkim. Mr. Singh will also participate in Shastra Puja and inaugurate a project of Border Roads Organisation BRO in Sikkim. More from our correspondent. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh reached Sukna military camp in Darjeeling district yesterday. He was accompanied by Chief of the Army Staff, General Manoj Mukund Narawane. Besides engagements with the Army and Biharu, Mr. Singh is scheduled to inaugurate a temple in Gangto. Sikkim Chief Secretary S.C. Gupta yesterday chaired a preparatory meeting with administrative officials, officers from the 17th Mountain Division, GREF and BRO, Home, Health and Tourism Departments, and Thakurbari Mandir committees, among others. With Sikkat Sarkar, Paija Chairman from Gangtok for AIA. Department of Horticulture Kashmir is organizing the third buy-seller meet in Srinagar today. A large number of stalls are being set up for display and sale of fresh as well as dry fruits. The event has been organized to create awareness among the public for consumption of fruit to help boost the immune system. A report from our Srinagar correspondent. In view of the good response from the public and for the benefit of growers and Ratan Nirbar Bharat, the Department of Horticulture Kashmir is organizing third buyer-seller meet tomorrow at Horticulture Complex in Srinagar. In the event, maximum stalls shall be established for display and sale of fresh as well as dry fruits. Prominent orchardists from all the districts of Kashmir region are scheduled to participate in the event. Besides, various cultural programs are also being arranged on the occasion. The event has been organized to create awareness among the general public for consumption of fruit to help boost the immune system in the wake of the prevailing circumstances. The timing of the event shall be from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and all the SOPs to contain spread of COVID-19 pandemic issued by the JNK government from time to time shall be strictly followed in lateral spirit. Sunil Kohl, AR News, Shirinagar. The festival of Vijaya Dashmi or Dashera is being celebrated across the country today. The festival is celebrated to remember Lord Ram's victory over Ravar, marking the triumph of good over evil. The day also marks the culmination of Navratri and Durga Puja. President Ramnath Kovind and Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu have greeted the people on the occasion. In a message, Mr. Kovind said, The festival strengthens the cultural unity of India and inspires us to live in harmony, following the path of virtue and shunning evil. In his message, Mr. Venkaya Naidu urged everyone to follow the COVID-19 health protocols while celebrating the Shara. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has extended greetings to the countrymen on the occasion of Mahanavmi. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said, On this auspicious occasion of Navratri, the ninth form of Goddess Durga, Ma Siddhidhatri, is worshipped. He said, May everyone get success in their work by the blessings of Ma Siddhidhatri. In Uttar Pradesh, the festival of Vijaya Dashmi is being celebrated with religious fervor and gaiety across the state. People have been asked to follow COVID-19 protocol during festivities. Elaborate security arrangements have been made and police forces have been deployed at sensitive places across the state. More from our correspondent. Governor of Uttar Pradesh, Anandi Bin Patel and Chief Minister Yogi Adinath have greeted the people on the occasion of Festival of Victory of Truth over Evil. While extending his message of greeting to people, Chief Minister said that the Festival of Vijay Dashmi symbolizes the victory of religion over iniquity, goodness over evil and truth over untruth. Chief Minister has appealed people to fully adhere to the protocol of COVID-19 and social distancing during the programs being organized on the occasion of the Sahara. In wake of COVID protocol, public functions of burning of effigies of Ravan or Ravan will not take place at large scale. Staging of Ramlila show with huge public gathering are also not being conducted in state, but people could virtually witness end of evil Ravan this evening through staging of international Ramlila at Ayodhya. The entire program is being telecast live on Doodrasan National and DD Bharti every day. MS Yadav, Yaya News. In IPL cricket, Kings XI Punjab beat Sunrisers Hyderabad by 12 runs in Dubai last night. 
There will be two matches today. The first match between Royal Challengers Bangalore and Chennai Super Kings will begin at 3:30 p.m. in Dubai. The second match between Rajasthan Royals and Mumbai Indians will begin at 7:30 p.m. at Sharjah. Now, let's take a look at the weather update. In the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature was 16 degrees Celsius in Jammu, while the maximum will be around 31 degrees. The city will have a mainly clear sky. In Srinagar, the sky will be mainly clear, becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Leh in Ladakh will have a mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature is minus 3 degrees Celsius, and the maximum will be around 14 degrees Celsius. Gilgit will have a partly cloudy sky with the possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Muzaffarabad will experience mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Chandigarh will witness mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature was 14 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 33 degrees Celsius. The national capital Delhi will have a misty sky. Mumbai will have a partly cloudy sky. In Chennai, there will be a thunderstorm with rain. The temperature will hover between 25 and 34 degrees Celsius. And now an overview of today's newspapers. In its front page story, the Times of India informs. India to allow foreign company to make and launch satellites as part of India's new space policy and as there are proposals from UK's OneWeb Norway's KSAT The Sunday Tribune reports that in the wake of tensions between Indian and Chinese troops the center has given approval to the Indo-Tibetan border police to set up 47 border outposts to increase vigil along the line of actual control In news that's likely to make some borderers happy the Asian Age reports Festival gift center okay's interest waiver on loans and informs that the finance ministry has approved guidelines for a scheme for grant of ex gratia payment of the difference between compound interest and simple interest for 6 months on loans up to 2 crore rupees and finally the pani reports that in a move that would go a long way in the conservation of snow leopards and prevent land degradation of the himalayan ecosystem india has identified three sets of landscapes across ladakh and himachal pradesh And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts in Mann ki Baat program at 11 this morning Health Minister Dr Harshvardhan says corona vaccine likely to be available in the country by January last day for filing of income tax and GST returns extended till 31st of December the shara is being celebrated across the country today and in IPL cricket Kings 11 Punjab beat Sunrisers Hyderabad with 12 runs in Dubai and with that we end the morning news have a nice day